Hi, and welcome to another Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. Today on the show, I am talking to a webcomic artist who actually reached out to me on Instagram. Uh, They reached out because they had just recently seen my comic and they just started talking to me about it. We started chatting back and forth about their comic and I was talking about my comic. And eventually I was like, this is an interesting conversation. Do you want to come on the show and we'll just talk about your comic so we can share it with people? So that's what we did. Today, uh, I'm going to be talking to a webcomic artist who I just met. And another thing too, there's a little rant at the end that we do about Instagram bots. When you post a hashtag and all of a sudden you start getting a slew of, hey, DM this on some random dumb name site sort of thing. I go off on that a little bit and we have a bit of a discussion. That part was kind of fun. It was just nice to vent about those stupid bots saying, DM your work to this because they're dumb. Anyway, here is my episode starting right now. My name is Ryan Roberts. I'm a illustrator, comic book enthusiast. Uh, I have a steady job working for a electric company here in uh, Texas called Encore. Uh, I do a lot of their drafting using computer aided software and such. But uh, I I guess I really consider myself a cartoonist. Okay. And so you're based in Texas. Yeah. Okay. And what do you do with the, do you do uh, art? I, I think I saw that it said you do drafting for this, for this company in your profile. Yeah. Okay. What, what does that entail? Okay, so uh, imagine that, um, oh, so you know all those huge transmission lines you see, you know, passing by on the highway? Probably. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, a lot of the times uh, they need fixing, you know, and they'll have people out in the field and they need to know exactly what it is that they're working on. So it's up to like, I guess you could say me and a few other drafters, designers who uh, give them schematics uh, to take with them out in the field. Uh, We'll pour through old drawings that were made back in the 60s or or the last time that they were worked on and give them as much information about the conductors, the shield wire, all that stuff that, you know, is is basically just trying to keep them safe. Okay. And also, um, after all the work's done, we kind of compare what's out there with what's on a paper and try and make it match as much as possible. So it, it's basically just drawing. I draw all day. Yeah, but but it's a different type of drawing. Like, it's, did you go to school for drafting in general, or did you want to go to school for cartooning? Uh, here's the thing. Yeah. So, uh, my, my dad is a drafter and he was like, okay, you can go to college and, uh, uh, hopefully you'll follow in my footsteps, you know, become a drafter. Uh-huh. You know, when you're a young kid, you're like, nah, I don't need to do that. <laughs> right. When, when we become a professional artist, you know, we yeah. have galleries and I'm going to see the world and, and uh, maybe become a cartoonist or something like that, make yeah. comic books for Marvel. Uh, and then, you know, going through college, I did try and get a, a bachelor's in fine arts, and I tried everything, you know, like um, classical painting, drawing, printmaking, sculpting. I, I threw myself at everything. Yeah. Even tried, like, um, uh, computer-aided graphic design. And... Uh, I eventually graduated from college at University of North Texas in 2009 with a bachelor's degree in printmaking and <laughs> no real jobs, uh, you know, uh, prospects in the future. Okay. Uh, I did a lot of um, what you call, I guess, uh, temp work. You know, I'd, I'd work on drawings or projects uh, for websites or software companies, you know, and that would just, you know, be a little like eating money. Yeah. And then I guess back in 2013, 2014, uh, one of my father's drafter friends was sick and he couldn't keep up with his work and like, Hey, this is like easy stuff. 
And I kind of had a knack for it. You know, I knew how to work the software and I can basically copy and paste anything that they needed. And I just kept doing it and I kept getting work and I, you know, it was so easy, like to continue drafting and, you know, paying bills and raising a family just as a drafter. And so the idea of me becoming a professional cartoonist or comic book artist mainly became more of a hobby. And actually, that was probably what worked out best for me. Yeah. I was able to have a steady uh, paycheck, but at the same time, I could also, you know, have a, a release for my, you know, creative side. Yeah. So, so you started yeah, doing web out. comics and then how did like, what yeah. made you, how did that get going? I mean, I understand that you're saying like, okay. well, then you got the job and you could do that, but it's like, you don't just jump in and go, okay, now I'm doing it. You, you know, how do you, uh, how do you, uh, I don't know. How did you get started with making web comics? Oh, okay. So, um, I guess I, I grabbed, um, uh, a computer. I grabbed some, Photoshop. I took classes. Uh -huh. I had one of those little, like, uh, you know, tablets that you could draw. The Wacom you know, tablets. On the computer. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. I had a lot of those. Uh, and uh, I just basically had an idea for a comic. It was like actually a class project at the time I was in college for one of my classes. Hmm. So I made a comic out of these characters, Bone Bag and Grim. And you, you can actually see the original comic if you go to my website. It's um, it's a really old black and white. I was drawing it all by hand, yeah. scanning it into like a you know one of the college scanners, and basically just doing the word bubbles and. Yeah, so on, so I love how we all start out that way. I was the same way when I started. I'm like, I'm going to do it the traditional way and I'll scan it in and you learn how to stitch the giant Bristol boards yeah. together. And it's like, or oh my gosh. draw it directly on there. And then you, you know, have a easier step and you can, uh, I know it's, but we all start out that way. We're like, no, I'm going to do it the traditional way. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty much that. So yeah, like I started out traditional, scan it in and then eventually learn how to color as I went along, yeah. you know? It was it was very flat, and um, I found that like making like a whole page, a whole comic book page, took like hours and hours and hours. Yeah. And then trying to make an actual comic book story, you know, that's like starting a a plot and just finishing it, mm -hmm. you know, and seeing it through, and it took forever. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't do this. I don't know, like, how you know artists are able to you know, draw comic books, you know, every month for Marvel or DC or whatever, you know, as a living. They do it by doing I it like a year in advance. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd lose my mind. Um, so uh, I, I was like, okay, or what if I just try and do something short? Like, you know, like, uh, do you remember the, the little Sunday comics we used to read as kids? Yeah. Calvin and Hobbes, Garfield, or, you know, Family Circus, or Far Side. Mm -hmm. that seemed like something, you know, easier. So I tried to like take a, you know, these characters and put them in like, I guess a non sequential gag -a day type setting, you know, uh, and trying to figure out the layout that I want it to be like six panels that I want it to be two panels. One, you know, just, I, I experimented a whole way. And the best way I was able to experiment was just, looking at a lot of my favorite mm -hmm. you know, comic book artists, you know, cartoonists, you know, uh, Calvin Hobbes, huge inspiration for me. Uh, I love the way, uh, Bill Watersmith created his, uh, comic characters and, and did his you know, fantastic stories. Yeah. But I guess I wanted to do something a little more silly. So I created bone bag and grim, I guess, uh, uh, like really created the web comic series in 2012. And by then I, you know, pretty much figured out what I wanted, you know, I wanted them to just kind of, you know, be a couple of ne'er-do-wells mm -hmm. living in the suburbs. One's a necromancer. The other one's kind of his, you know, assistant, but you know, at the same time, uh, they were roommates. So they had this kind of mutt Jeff, you know, uh, relationship where they would just get into all kinds of situations where they were just trying to earn a buck, 
Yeah. And <laughs> uh, the reason why I wanted them to be like ne'er do wells is like nothing that they would do would actually work out. You know, kind of like, um, do you remember Pinky and the Brain back yeah. in the day? Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely wanted them to like have that, you know, we're going to try something and it's going to get us loads of money and then it ends up failing. So that I felt was a good way to have my characters uh, be, uh, I guess you'd say, um, interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not like superheroes. They, they don't fight crime. They're just, you know, out to squeeze out a living. And they live in the suburbs of like the human world. Uh, they come from uh, the underside. And there's like this huge backstory that I eventually would like to, to like sit down and write and, and, and put the paper. Um, and I've had a couple ideas, but mainly the, the best thing has been just coming out with like a few shorts, you know, maybe two comics per month. Back when I first started, it would take me like a whole month just to do like one bone bag comic. Okay. Just four or five panels because it was just so new i didn't know what i was doing you know drawing it out coloring it lettering it all that just it it was it was pretty hard at the beginning but now i've kind of got a good swing i can easily pull out a a, a web comic in about a, a a week you know just work on it an hour a day yeah and by web comic you mean a, a like a contained one not a full arc story like you know, here's yeah, a page today. Just a here's contain. A page. Okay. Nothing, nothing special. Just you okay. know, something that's you know interesting, and I can post online and yeah. on my website or you know Facebook, all those social medias. Just post it wherever I could, and you know eventually get people interested in it. Yeah. And it took a couple of years. You know, I think uh, I became really more knowledgeable with using social media like Instagram. Um this year and last year just trying to figure out like how it all works yeah how do you get you know more followers using hashtags all that stuff it's right. just like a the stuff we all do <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and you know you have like a really good comic if i hadn't told you that already yeah i thank really you. enjoy you know uh you know looking through it and it's it's really good stuff yeah i i had to uh figure out a way to get around the writing part so i just write about my day <laughs> so i just go this is what happened to me you know yeah so that, that's, that's great that's because uh, i've done the trying to write a story part and but that's truthfully the thing that takes me the longest is the writing part it's uh, doing the comic it's like oh my god let's just finish this story so i can start drawing already uh, but I can't right. start drawing if I have nothing to draw about. So at least with my day, it's like even even embracing the mundane is what I really like to do in mine. Like uh, just kind of something being like, you know, as simple as, oops, I broke a glass or I was driving and somebody honked their horn at me and, you know, people are mean. Uh, that sort of thing, you know, just just like weird, <laughs> relatable, dumb things. Uh, and I don't know, I kind of I kind of embrace that. Um, and one thing I'd like to say too, I was looking at, uh, your comics. I love the fact that you're using Google sites, uh, for your website. <laughs> Cause it's a great platform. I don't, uh, not enough people use it. There are people out there who want to start a website. And of course it's like the, it's like the, uh, easier version of Squarespace. It has all these options, it, but it, of it. course they're Google contained options, but, but yeah, it's a, it's a good alternative for a website and it's free. So I think it's well, cool that you're using that. My wife was the one who, my wife was the one who like said like, you need a website. You, you already own the, the name bone bag comics right here. And, and cause she's a teacher, she uses like the Google share drive and mm -hmm. she creates all these, um, uh, uh, assignments for her classes and she uses that Google sites. So she was the one who's like, push me in the right direction. And it was super easy to figure out very much posting pictures and keeping it all very simple, easy for either access on phones or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, desktop, depending on, and I wanted to make sure that, you know, my comics were like safe to read at work. You know, they weren't going to be flagged or anything. Yeah. And that, you know, when my kids got older and started reading my comics, that 
I was gonna, I wasn't gonna be like weird about like, yeah, Dan was kind of, kind of crazy back then, right? <laughs> yeah, the it, and that's the the beauty of it is it is a drag and drop interface. It even has layouts that you can use. It's all pretty intuitive, and and uh, you know, attaching the you said you already had the URL. Attaching that isn't that hard. So I I just thought that I wanted to mention that, and also you you just, you filled that thing. Like you've got tons. Of, it's not just a, here's my comic sort of thing. Like you've got all kinds of things going on on your site. So that's really cool. I like that. Well, originally I, I guess, uh, I was posting and creating, uh, I, uh, links to each of these comics and different pages. Like you had to select one to go to like the archives or whatever. Right. And my wife was like, uh, you need to like, simplify just make everything more easier uh -huh. and i'm like okay all right so uh what do i need to do it's like well just put all your comics where everyone can see it like a, you know scrolling down or scrolling uh however just right. so they can you know see everything and you can have all the little links but just make it you know to where it's easier to find you know like okay all right you know she she gives great advice she's you know definitely my editor-in-chief okay uh anytime i I'm proud of a comic. I was like, "Hey, hun, I made this comic. What do you think? <laughs> like, you misspelled this word." Oh, but, but I hate that. Spell check didn't didn't like. No, it, it should be, you know, bought, not brought. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I just posted it, so I got to fix that. Uh huh. But um, yeah, mine's so even worse because I write all of mine by hand. I don't use. Uh, I don't. I don't type it out, so I can't. I don't have the, the little thing. red line underneath. <laughs> That's the thing. Like it, um, it, it makes it a lot easier. Like I went on to uh, what was it, Lambots, you know, or or you can just uh, Google search free fonts, comic right. book fonts, and there's like tons and tons to choose from, and it really helps. It really does. Yeah. You know, uh, like there's there's people who make you know their own font. I I don't have that kind of time or no uh, inclination. And then there's people like you who actually write handwrite everything yeah and that's insane i, I have <laughs> terrible penmanship i can't do this i can draw but i can't write right uh i used to love writing in cursive back in you know fifth grade i had perfect penmanship that all went out the window in high school right <laughs> Yeah, I only do the writing just because I want to keep the aesthetic of it being a diary. Like that's that's the main reason mm -hmm. I do it. And and also it is for me it is since I do everything of mine on a tablet to add the text in the program that I use on the tablet is actually like kind of it, it's actually difficult for me. Uh, it, you got to size it and make sure it fits and to do all this work around to get, you know, I don't I don't open it up as an export in a different thing and put, you know, basically I can just draw it out and like write on top of, or, you know, write my text and then draw underneath it. So for me, it's just, it's mm -hmm. also easier, but I do it because of the diary aspect. And speaking of that, what is your process for making your comics these days? Like what, when you start to do a web comic, like how, how are you making them these days as opposed to scanning oh, them in or doing them, you know, that <laughs> way? Well, uh, like I said, uh, once I got used to doing everything digitally, I, I still use, Photoshop. Photoshop's my okay. number one go to. I had uh, I, I created uh, templates, um, basically just blank uh, backgrounds uh, with uh, ruled off areas, and uh, I, I depending on like I'll make a it generally a certain size depending on where I want to post it, and uh, resizing it to fit whatever other website I want to post it on. If they have like those kind of size issues. Yeah. Um, everything used to be really hard. You know, you're starting out, you just sketch everything out. And, and then once you sketched it, then I would, um, figure out where I wanted to put the word bubbles or whatever was being said and figure out like, well, I mean, I have a lot of words in here. I can't really like fit a lot of art. So I've got to either push his head down to make more room for the words or I need to shorten up this sentence. And uh, once I figured out the dialogue, then it was easier to just actually go through and, you know, ink it and color it and make it all nice and pretty. Um, the, the bordering, I don't know if you noticed it. It's very like splatter. Uh, I try to make it. Yes, I have noticed that. I like that. I was inspired by uh, a 
comic book artist from the 90s. His name was Sam Keith. He did the Max. Oh, I love that, especially the animated stuff. series. I was such a huge fan of that. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. If any, if ever it, there was a comic, TV. yeah, if ever there was a comic that actually looked and emulated the comic book, it was that animated yes. series. Like it, it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that was such it a was great show. Perfectly well done. Yeah. Um. And, and so I loved how like he would do his you know boxes. They were so irregular. They weren't perfect. They were like. It had personality. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, I'd love it if, you know, I just make my um, borders look like huge, you know, Rorschach or ink blot or just messy. And so I I have like just a whole page of just different um, borders, you know, they're all like styled differently. So I could just grab them, copy, paste them into like new comics. So I don't have to like waste my time drawing them in each every a single new comic that I try and create, which you know, again, that's another time saver. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, coloring is always been like the biggest time consuming part of the process. You know, um, I mean, yeah, I try and think of a great, you know, comic using, you know, whatever inspired me to, you know, have something happen to these characters. But once that's done, just like going through it, you know, drawing it, coloring it, adding like textures and all that stuff, and then making it look, you know, nice and pretty. Yeah. And uh, eventually figuring out how I wanted them to look, you know, uh, bone bags, very thin, almost like a pencil head. Like um, there's a comic book artist. His name is Rob Schraub. Uh, and uh, he did this comic called, uh, Scud the Disposable Assassin. And that was like very indie, very like, you know, black and white and mm -hmm. action packed. And it's like, okay, I like that style. I'll like kind of emulate, emulate it a little bit. So I'd find inspiration, you know, just about everywhere. You know, what inspired me as a kid is what inspires my comics the most. Yeah. Um, I may not be able to like do a long arc story. But I'll definitely have them go through some goofy stuff, you know? Yeah, of course. And when you do the uh, text, are you doing that in Illustrator? Are you doing in the bubbles? Are you doing that vector? Or are you doing that in Photoshop? That's that's interesting. Uh, in the beginning, I would draw everything in Photoshop. And then when I wanted to do the, the lettering and the bubbles, yeah. I would go into Illustrator. Okay. But then I found that, you know, when I would have to either resize or or flatten the drawing, I'd still lose a lot of that, you know, sharpness, you oh. know, from you know, the, the, the vectors being, you know, rasterized, whatever. Yeah. So I really, then, you know, what? never mind. I'll just do it all in Photoshop. Works okay. out just fine. And you're, you're hand drawing um, them. You're not drawing them with like the Brizzy or Bri however you pronounce that tool. The You're not doing them with the pen tool or anything like that. Or are you doing them by hand? Actually... No, no, no. Um, glad you asked. The the word bubbles, it, it's just like a an oval shape, and I'm able to resize it to fit the text. Okay. And then, of course, using the pen tool to get the... Because I tried to do, like, hand drawing that little, like, swoop, the Nike symbol to right. attach the word bubble to yeah. the person speaking. Like the tail that, that tells yourself. Forever. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, just doing a pen tool kind of just made it so much easier. And uh, I didn't have to like worry too much about like uh, how you know close to the mouth it was or you know what shape it was. It, it generally, uh, the hardest part was just trying to figure out like, well, I mean, what what do I want to cover up? What do I want to like you know uh, still show from the background? Because right uh, when I first started, I was all about like drawing you know, all this detail in the background just to make it, you know, really interesting. Like those uh, watchmen right. back in the day. Yeah, everybody so did. Much detail. <laughs> we all thought we were going to do that. <laughs> and then I realized like, no, I can just, just have like a, a, a plain colored background. They don't care. Right. They're just going to read it in about, you know, 60 seconds and move on. So why like waste all that time when no one's really going to see all those tiny details? But occasionally... You know, I throw something in the background, um, like an, an angry garden gnome or something like that. And people were like, ah, that looks pretty cute. It reminded me like a, 
the uh, that show Gravity Falls. Like, yeah, that's, right. that's kind of where I, where I was going with it. Actually, uh, there was something you mentioned before about how you were resizing your your images for like the different platforms that need different sizes. Yeah. Um. So I wanted to give you a tip just because you actually upload yours on a on your site, which is a Google site. Um, they, the images that are there, if you right click on one of the comics that you upload and do open image in another tab, and then you view mm -hmm. the image, if you look at the URL and then go all the way to the end of the URL, there's a thing like I have one of yours open right now that says W1 or uh, 1280, which is with okay. 1280. You can actually uh -huh. in Google, because of it being a responsive website, they have a thing built in that resizes the images on the fly so it will load quicker if you actually change the oh. number on that width to say like the 940 tapas site so if you go w940 hit enter you can download that image and it'll be sized to the width of 940 which is the requirement for tapas or if you size it to w800 and then hit enter mm -hmm. and then download it it's sized to the width of 800 for webtoons and that's what I do on my site because I host wow. my site on Blogger and that's what I do each time. I upload it to mm -hmm. my website, then go to it on the site, right click, open image in a new tab and then resize it and download that. So I don't have to go like, now I have to resize all the files or export it as a certain <laughs> thing or open the file and have the, it, it's just something I can do like, okay, I uploaded it to my site anyway. So a little tip for you. If you go to the URL, when you open it up at the very end, there's a little indicator to show what size the image is. So I that's just wanted amazing. to share that with you. Yeah. So you can try that. You don't have to. I just thought I'd mention it. No, <laughs> and then, uh, so I saw recently too, or not recently. I mean, we just met each other. So of course, everything I saw was <laughs> recently. Um, but you, uh, you have a red bubble store. How's that? So you've been putting stuff on there. Is that, I know a lot of people like to sell merchandise and, yeah. uh, and want to sell merchandise. So how has that process been going for you? I see like, like all these web comics and they would have merchandise like almost immediately. And that was great, you know, for them, I guess. But for me, it's like more about the comics. I didn't really care yeah. so much about the the merchandise at the beginning. Although having like my comic book character on a T-shirt is pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, I I guess I I started asking around online, saying like, hey, what do you think of this website? If I wanted to make merchandise, what website do you use? And they gave me um uh choices like if i wanted to go with just stickers there's a, a perfect web place that did stickers or if you want like a a printing company you know redbubble but um you know i i kind of i wanted to see what my stuff looked like on redbubble so i ordered you know a few shirts mm -hmm. and a few stickers just to see and it looks it looks okay yeah um but recently i went over to like t public and i guess it's either what they use to like scan or, or create the images. It just looks a lot sharper. It looks a lot better. Okay. And so I, even though the, I, I started with red bubble for like my merchandise, I, I kind of starting to like switch over to T uh, public just because I'd rather my fans or, or people having a better quality. Oh yeah. Stuff. Um, and, yeah, it it wasn't like my intention to like you know make merchandise myself, other than like make little you know business cards you know with individual arts that I could hand out to people if I went to a, a say like a comic book convention mm -hmm. or if I decided to get an artist table or something like that. But like seeing my comic book characters on T-shirts was really fun, you know. So that was definitely right. Um, like, oh, wow, I, I, I've, I've brought myself up to the next level of what I'm wanting to do. Yeah. Um, a long time ago, uh, this, oh, I say a long time ago, it was like back in 2016, right around the time that I was trying to figure out where I wanted to go with Boneback Comics. Um, there was a company, um, an animation company oh, called okay. Cartoon Hangover. Oh yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They work off of YouTube. Oh, I loved yeah, that. And, and then like, it just disappeared one day. I mean, it's still there yeah, technically, yeah. but they used to do all these great original shows, and then it was just clips. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so back in the day, they they had all these like little short animations. Um, 
uh, people would submit them and they post them on their website or they would, they would, they would basically just be pilots, mm -hmm. you know, ideas for like shows. And they had this, uh, open, uh, uh, I guess contest or whatever. Like you could submit your, um, idea for a possible, you know, animation. And I'm like, Oh wow. I, I, I think I can totally do that. That, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Cause that would be like another step. I definitely want to take them into. And so I try to sketch up like a, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's not like a, a storyboard. It was very rough. Oh, very an animatic? rough storyboard. Uh, it's kind of like that, but, uh, uh, for lack of what I'm trying to think of, it was a storyboard. Okay. So, and it, and it had to only be like about five, five minutes long, you know, so it couldn't be like that long. Um, so I had to come up with like a, a pretty long comic or comic idea and uh, I pitched it to them, you know, much like what we're doing right now, you know, just uh, walking them through it. And, you know, they, they gave me some really good advice, mm -hmm. you know, try and figure out where you want to go with these characters, what you want to say, what you want to do. And then um, I, I obviously didn't get picked or anything like that, but, it definitely, you know, put me on a better track. So I had this story. I'm like, well, I worked pretty hard on it. Why don't I just turn it into a long bone bag comic? So if you go back onto my website, you can actually see I colored it. I, I fleshed it out. I, I, I really went the whole nine yards with it. And, uh, it's not like published like on paper or anything. It's totally digital. Yeah. Because I, again, that's another thing I wasn't sure about was, did I want to make, you know, holding in your hand comics. Uh, eventually, maybe I definitely would like to. But you've you never know, done it a, up to this point. You've never done actual like published comics or print your own or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. And anything before that was just basically whatever I could scrounge for uh, a Costco or a zine, you know, something really small and just kind of like um, sell it for a dollar or whatever, just just to uh, just to make it fun. Yeah. I wasn't really in it for profit. I was just in it to have fun. Okay. Um, and that that was that was really interesting. It was one of those kind of like stepping stones. I like. Um, I'm happy with how it's turned out so far. Um, I've I've gotten a lot of you know people all over the world, United States and uh, goodness, Italy, uh, uh, Europe. Uh, well, obviously, Italy is in Europe, but um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I don't know and, where anything uh, is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you went to Prague, so no, you I know I did. On, and I didn't know where that was until I went. It's just like the United <laughs> States. Like I'm gradually learning where each state is because I had to go to it. So I haven't gone to right. a lot of places. <laughs> There's been no. Need. Um, and uh, it. Oh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, like, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback. Yeah. You know, it's been great, you know. That's good. Uh, I eventually would like to either, you know, take all these uh, bone bag comics and maybe put it into a book, you know, or, you know, eventually try again and make it into, like, a, a short little um, pilot, you know, and maybe eventually it'll be picked up on Netflix if that's a thing in the future. <laughs> You do have Who one knows? book that's on Amazon, though, uh, that that you have a yes, link to on your yes. site. So, uh, so you yes. have you have a technically done ago. print on demand books and an that, ebook. That's sure, <laughs> so, it, it was it was an ebook, and then eventually, you know, people could you know purchase it as paper. But it was originally just meant as an ebook because you know at the time um, those Kindle fires were everywhere. Everyone yeah. had one. Yeah, you know? and you're like oh, I just want to make a, a an easy uh, kids book. Uh, my daughter had just been born back in 2012. I was, you know, a, I guess struggling between uh, being a stay-at-home dad and, and you know, uh, being a, a starting out as a drafter or a, a website designer. You know, I was it was pretty rough back then. Mm -hmm. But uh, my wife was a huge, huge inspiration. She's she's been my editor in chief. She's been you know, that little voice that kept me going, you know, didn't let me get sidetracked, you know, or, you know, uh, uh, stagnate. Yeah. 
Uh, and she's definitely got tough love written all over her. She does not pull her punches at all. Like, this looks like crap. Do it again. Like, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and that fire would just keep me going. Okay. And so, yeah, it, it was definitely like a um, a thank you and a, a love letter to my, my, my daughter. You know, she was so little back then. Now she's all grown up. Yeah. Well, and aside from gaining a disciplinarian, apparently, to make you uh, draw web comics better, uh, what are what are some tips that you have for people drawing web comics or who want to draw web comics? Do you have anything you've learned over the years that you've done it that you would that you're like, oh, if I only knew this then, or just any little tips or yeah. tidbits? Yeah. It, okay. Um, write down as much as you can. If you think it's a dumb idea, yeah. and it might be, write it down. Cause like I, I would doodle, uh, on my lunch breaks on little sticky notes. And those are like perfect little like squares, you know, you could like get three or four of them together and you, you've got a comic or at least the start of it. Right. Um, figure out how you want it to, to look, you know, once you, once you figure out how you want it to look, you know, just filling it in, you know, that, that comes easier. Oh, uh, what else? Find your own style, you know? experiment you know mm -hmm. look at other people's artwork find what you like about theirs try and incorporate it you know and see what sticks um keep drawing yeah always never stop you know just because it gets hard doesn't mean that it's ever going to stop being hard but the more you draw the better you get it's not going to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect, but it always gets better. Yeah. Um, find out what medium works best for you. If you want to do it digitally, if you like Photoshop or any of those procreate, you know, heck even like Microsoft paint. Yeah. You know, if it works for you, it works for you. Right. Um, and just, uh, don't worry about like all the naysayers out there, you know, people who are like, Oh, my kid can draw better. It's like, well, okay, <laughs> good for them. Exactly. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And, um, you know, just have fun, really. It, it, it shouldn't be, you know, money shouldn't be your number one concern. What okay. should be your number one concern is just making yourself happy, mm -hmm. you know? Well, then, in, and, on, on a weird angle from that, how do you promote yourself? How do you get the word out there about your comic? Cause it's one thing Goodness. just to make it what um, you can. And it's like, anybody can, it's perfectly fine to just post it and then maybe people will find it. But like, you know, what do right, you do? Right. Um, okay. So first of all, I did have a website, you mm -hmm. know, that's the first place that I, 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 I started it. Uh, and then eventually I became a little bit more, uh, um, okay with sharing it on different websites. Like, gosh, there was like, deviant art back in the day you know yeah. everyone was posting their artwork on there and and then i tried like reddit for a little bit but there were like too many like down votes like oh i can't deal with this negativity right uh facebook like okay there's a lot of people here on facebook i'll i'll promote my stuff there and then uh, i only started on instagram in like 2019 you know yeah there have been people who really had something going on like webtoons or you know tapas and that was working for them i you know i was just basically you know putting whatever i could create out there and seeing if people enjoyed it and okay. i definitely was you know gaining people who liked it you know hmm. real not just like the the followers that you know just joined whatever i had had people who comment like hey this was really funny you did a okay. great job. I love it. This, I love the characters, the colors. It's amazing. All right. Wonderful style, you know, and that was like really interesting because then I would, you know, check out their comics and find, you know, interesting stuff with them. And then it was basically just being shared, you know, word of mouth, you know, however Instagram was working, you know, you could post a, 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 a comic and then later on the day you could, uh, post a story about it just to remind people that there was a new post um, out there or, you know, do a preliminary like, Hey, on Friday, I'll be posting, you know, look for it then. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, hashtagging the, 
the jeebies out of you know my my comics like throwing just about anything and everything i could think of um just to see what would stick. lately for me has I, I feel like on instagram especially it's just become a hub for bots these days for the love yes of, like basically anytime yeah. i use a hashtag I have no views on the image, but somehow I get a message going, Hey, DM this to some random stupid, you know, right, right. title thing. And it's like, first of all, what the hell does that mean? You know, like <laughs> you DM it. Like, why are you telling me to do it? First of all, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm so outraged no, by no, no. these bots and I get, I just sit there and delete I, them I totally all day understand. long. I used to try and mess with them. I used to actually yeah, try to respond like fine. they'd go, they'd go DM this on what? And I'd go, why don't you do it? I'm busy. And then all of a sudden, all that does is it activates the bot. And then you get a actual DM from them going, Hey, you want a thousand subscribers for this, that, and the other. And it's like, okay, I just looked at your profile. You have no subscribers because you're a bot. Yeah. And then they were <laughs> like, don't you want to have more followers? And it's like, okay, you're not a bot. You're just some troll you know, trying to, I, I just don't understand how they make the money doing this thing. That's what I mean. It's like, how, well, I can, what's their I can angle? Tell you. How? Um, <laughs> so, uh, the story behind that really is, okay. This is literally their job. Um, uh, whenever, uh, their, I guess, account and they have several, oh, several yeah. accounts. No, when you block them, and then they, you get a you know, message from one that's the number up. One, like it'll be promote on comics right, dot right, one one one, right. and then you block it, and it'll be hey promote this on comics dot one one two. Like it's it's a living and, and, thing, and that's what I used to do. Yeah, uh, but one of the um, one of the web comic creators, uh, he's really talented. He uh, he and I did a I guess a crossover comic. He does a Boney Z. He's Italian. And he's actually one of those type of people who's um, a social media savant. Okay. Like that's basically his real job is, you know, uh, promoting, you know, social media, all that. So he knows the ins and outs of the, the algorithm, so to speak. So anytime that you get like a message on, on your post or whatever, whether it's a bot or not, that's, you know, helping the algorithm to see your comic. Oh yeah. You know, and then when you respond to their their post, it's basically just giving you free publicity. Mm -hmm. That's it. So when I was blocking it, I was really actually hurting my comments, or at least people from seeing it, like on the main page. Um, also, you know, the time of day that I would post. You know, I like to do it early in the morning, right before I get started on my work. Yeah. Um, and then uh, draw a, a new comic on my lunch break. And then so on and so forth. And he was just telling me, like, just post one something, even if it's a repost, every day. More and more chances it's going to be seen. Also, use the maximum of your hashtags. You know, mm -hmm. make sure it's, you know, stuff that's related. Comic book art, uh, funny comics, um, web comics, you know, whatever, you know, works for you. Even, like, uh, something that's fully, you know, weird, like... I hate Mondays or um, throwback Thursdays, something, something that's just unique for that particular post. Yeah. And, you know, that was really helping. Also, because he had like, I don't know how many followers, whenever he would do a story or like, hey, check out this guy, I suddenly had like so many more likes and so many more people, you know, interested in my comics than I could believe. And it was just like something like that. It was just basically just paying it forward. Yeah. If you see a comic on on social media, tell people about it because odds are like not everyone gets to see what you create. And that's a shame. Like your comics. Mm -hmm. I didn't discover them until like maybe um, last month, maybe. Yeah. And I, I started scrolling through them and they're like really good. I love those kind of Thank diary you. a day comics. They're really great, you know. They have a message, you know, they're interesting and it's like real life. It's mm. great, you know, and you don't see that a whole lot. Uh, I, I'm really close to getting a thousand, uh, followers on Instagram. Maybe once I hit that mark, I can start doing the same thing. Find right. comics, find people who like it and like post about it. And that's, it's really help. It's that paying, paying it forward it really does help. Yeah. You know, hashtagging. Yeah, and, and posting and not, you know, becoming obscure. 
Yeah. And or having course, people having, on your podcast. <laughs> or having people on your podcast. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, so speaking of that, so one more thing that I want to do, uh, make sure that we talk about is uh, if people did want to see your stuff, where would they, uh, where would you send them to go check out your comics and everything? Okay. So if they wanted to see all of it, you yeah, know, everything that I've ever done, it would definitely be on my website, uh, www.bonebagcomics.com. You know, you can find everything I've ever made. Um, you can also see links to my shop. You know, if you wanted some merchandise, you can find my kids' book. You can even find, you know, uh, bone bag comics that I've never posted anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's there for, you know, anyone to see everything that I've ever done. But if you also want to like find me on social media, I'm on Instagram at, you know, bone bag comics, uh, Facebook also. Heck, I even Googled myself to see, you know, if anyone else has, uh, got bone bag anything. Yeah. And apparently here's the funny thing. Um, I didn't hear that term bone bag until the movie Casper. Do you remember that movie? No, I, I didn't see, yeah, I didn't see that one. No, I know of the wow. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so there was like the, the ghostly trio and yep. that I know from the uh, comics. They called, Oh, <laughs> well, the, from the movie Casper back in, like, I, I don't know, it was maybe 1996, but anyway, yeah. so like, uh, one of the ghostly trio called, um, I guess Christina Ricci and her father, uh, the actor I can't think of, but, Hey, looking out for your bone bag. And right. Like, oh, that, that sounds really familiar. That's that's actually the name of my character. Did I create the character based off that name or was it the other way around? I mean, <laughs> was that kind of happenstance or what? I don't know. Right. But it's fun. I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. It was really great to get a chance to talk to you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This has been really fun.